all you need to know about Rose Oriana, the Eminence and Shadow Season 2 content from Anime Stats. Let's see what he has to say. Childhood. Rose was, who was, Rose, who was born with an incredible amount of magic as a baby. This is true because the Season 2 finale said that Mordred specifically said, your kingdom from the past was the first to ever like collide with the realm or no, summon something with like, so through like a, some kind of gate or portal for a different realm, right? So therefore, their family, their lineage has all the magic in their blood and it's important to have, let's say, the bloody Rose to even work, right? The Cult of Diablos. Rose was intended to be handed over to the cult to use her royal blood for their experiments. And like, the dad denied this request. But the fucking mom, I guarantee you, the mom is the one that approached Cult of Diablos and said, Please, give us money. I'll fucking sell you my daughter. What a piece of shit. Next. Father. However, her father refused to give up Rose and sent her to study at Midgir Academy. So that's why Oriana was sent over to Midgir Academy instead of like, like you know, staying back at the Oriana Kingdom. See, the dad's goaded, dude. The dad's actually so good. Rose is 17 years old, two years older than Sid Kagano. That's why we do call her Rose Senpai, but I didn't realize that Sid was 15. I don't know, I thought there was like an age difference, but it's not even that big a difference, but damn. Now that I think about this, the, the way that Sid thinks, the, the way that he's edgy, it's a 15 year old kid. Why? Because, like, sometimes when you watch anime, you view it through the lens of your own self. So if you're, like, older, you, you might not be able to relate with the character. So it's, like, the fact that he's 15, it's, like, damn, you're right. He is 15. All this dumb, cringe, edgy shit he does it totally makes sense. That's the Chuni age. Kind-hearted. Rose is exceedingly kind and easily places her trust in others. This is true. Cool royal. Despite, uh, despite her royal lineage, she holds no discrimination towards commoners. A lot of the elites are the nobles or the rich people on this isekai or fantasy shows. They always look down on the peasants, huh? the commoners, but Rose is beyond that. Alpha's also 15? Okay. Okay, I wish they were all 18. Goddamn. Would help me not get cancelled. Lasting impression. After being saved by the stylish band slayer and witnessing his beautiful sword play, what happened? What happened? Rose sees swordsmanship as an art form with great potential and not just a hobby. Stylish Banner Slayer was just fucking everywhere, huh? Just saving Yukime, Rose, all the fucking shades. Like, she was just everywhere as a child, just doing all this shit, just setting up for the future, huh? Talented. Rose was considered to be the strongest student at Midgar Royal Spell Sword Academy until. Well, Iris, I thought Iris was the strongest. I, I guess maybe Iris is younger than Rose, maybe? I'm not completely sure. Iris? Second only to Iris Midgar, which is... No, we know this isn't the case anymore, right? We know that Iris is not stronger than Rose anymore because obviously, I, I, you know, Rose fucking got, you know, the fucking powers, right? Rose got the powers now, so... Huh? But right over here, Iris isn't in school anymore? Ain't in school. Iris graduated. Right over here it says Rose was considered to be the strongest student at Midgar Royal Spell Sword Academy until second only to Iris Midgar, which implies that you know Iris is number one and Rose was considered to be the strongest un until Iris, right? Unless the wording of this, right? The wording of this, it, uh, the wording of this kind of sounded like Rose came in first. She was like popping off as a rookie. And then Iris joined the next year, and then Iris was the strongest. I don't know. Experiment number one. Rose's magic had the ability to heal other people and herself. I didn't read that. Royal struggle. After Rose killed her father, the Oriana kingdom was plunged into the civil war. Poor, poor Oriana, dude. Uh, that might have been spoilers, but we, we just ignore the spoilers. We act like we didn't see anything. Nope, didn't see anything there. That's right. The royal struggle. The kingdom was split between those still loyal to the Oriana royal family and those. So it's basically just like anti-perv and pro-perv asset factions, right? Exactly. Who want a perv asset to become the king. And those exact same people were the first to betray perv asset in a fucking instant, dude. 
That's what happens, man, when you're just used as a fucking tool. Magic color. After she received power from Shadow, her magic color changed from bright yellow to light green. This is interesting. That did happen. The glare in her eyes, right? The, the light in her eyes definitely was. It's like more, it's like green instead of yellow. So like, is this an important thing? Does this go into hand with the, the healing powers? I don't know. Green is associated with like support healing stuff, right? I'm not really sure. Chosen one. Maybe he's capping. I'm not really sure, but it is green. Or Oriana's magic color was green then. Chosen one. Excluding the seven shadows. Rose is one of the only two other people who received power directly from shadow. That's right. Victoria 559 also received directly. And that's why Victoria feels like there's some sort of rivalry. She's always like checking Oriana. She's always so hostile towards her. I'm sure that competition is going to continue forward. Oh, wait. Look at this, guys. Look at this animation right here. This is what I'm talking about. On the left side, the positioning of the panels right now is unfortunate because it's about to go to the left. But look at her eye movement. Boom. I love this shit. When anime does this and you can see like trace of a line through their eyes. It's usually whenever they're in the zone. So good. Magic color again. Rose's swordsmanship skill developed even further after she was trained by Lambda. That's right, in the Alexandria HQ. After cutting up her clothes and just fucking destroying her burger wrapper. I guess she got some skills from Lambda. Lambda was kind of popping off in the season finale too. Cutting off, we saw a moment where Lambda like was saving people, you know, cutting off those monsters summoned by Ragnarok. Now love. Rose respects and admires Sid, developing romantic feelings for him. But this is so fucked. Like, does Sid love Oriana? Because I think that he has no interest. He likes Rose Senpai, but he doesn't love her. But Oriana thinks that like Sid's pretty much proposed to her. Like, remember when he showed up in the balcony playing the fucking piano? And then he did the coolest shit. He's playing the piano. He just like talking to Oriana. And then he does the shadow voice for a second. The piano stops abruptly. Then he's gone. And only a ring is on the piano chair. And it's like, oh, ho, ho. but then Rose sees that and she's like, did he just propose to me? Is, is this a ring of love? And then it's like, wait, did Sid just do this to be really cool? Or, or is he actually making moves on Oriana? And then it's like, no, a couple seconds after he says, oh, shit, where did the ring go? It's not in my pants anymore. Oh, well, it is what it is. So if you think about it from the lens of Oriana, it's so funny, but at the same time, it's so sad that her love is being completely misdirected and like, well, at least he's there for her, right? Even if it's a misunderstanding, at least he was there as an emotional support pillar to her mental health in the recent arc in the season two finale. But goddamn, bro, it's kind of, it's kind of fucked up. It's kind of fucked up. All right, motivations. Love for Sid motivates her to fight the cult and make hard decisions. That's right. And like towards Shadow, I think like Oriana has a totally different um, demeanor to Shadow. Because obviously she doesn't know who Shadow is, which is everybody should know by now. But it's like, she's like not intimidated, but there's definitely a level of respect and a barrier, a wall of barrier to Shadow compared to everyone else. Yeah, it's just like respect for Shadow. Irony. Sid has no clue that Rose is a member of the Shadow Garden. This is actually hilarious. Oriana doesn't know who Shadow is. And Shadow doesn't know that Oriana 666. He didn't even know what 666 meant. He thought 666? Is this an employee ID card? What? He doesn't even know the fucking hierarchy structure of his own organization as the fucking founding CEO. But... <laughs> Like, they both don't know each other are in your... Like, you're fucking there together. But it's like, you don't even know. All right. The slime bodysuit. Rose is highly proficient at using her magic to change the shape and color of the slime bodysuit. To the point where someone mentioned that, hey, Oriana, did you see her hair? Look at this. It's short right now. But suddenly, after she went back to Lord Pervasat, her hair got longer. And someone said, actually, it's the slime bodysuit. 
She's not worrying anymore, but she used her magic to make the slime bodysuit into the longer hair extensions. So I was like, huh, are you cooking right now? Holy shit, this guy's onto something. And then we saw in the penultimate episode before the season finale, <laughs> it's just a fucking wig. She was wearing a fucking wig the entire time and she fucking throws it off when she fucking reveals to Lord Pervass that this fucking wedding is off. That was a cool scene though. <laughs> I popped off so hard when the wig came off. I, I don't know if you guys like watched other reactors and saw like a moment from like their reactions on that moment of when the wig came off. Maybe I'm the only one who's fixated on it, but goddamn, when that happens, that was a huge reveal to me. I popped off harder at that fucking fake wig, dude, than other moments. Like, <laughs> I don't know. In my, I'm, I'm just fucking schizo, dude. I'm just schizo. I'm fucking delusional in the head, and I just have my own head cannon, <laughs> and I just go with it. And when I see shit like this, it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, okay. It's like in Day to Life when Elliot is in a wheelchair right against meeting you know fucking westcott and elliot stands up out of the wheelchair and it's like hold up this is insane it's pretty much that all right the slime now i never know how to say this word i know it's like a saber like a skinny sword but you got to be very careful on how you say this word a white r word she used is molded from the slime and finally the wedding dress the wedding dress she wore ceremony was actually a slime bot. Okay, wait. Hold, guys, do you see this? Do you see this? The wedding dress she wore during the wedding ceremony was actually a slime bodysuit. So then you could actually argue that like the wig, because it's part of the wedding dress, I, I don't know, that it is still slime. So hold the fuck up. My mind is being blown again. I don't know anymore. Maybe they were right. Oh shit. Yo, maybe they were right. Maybe that the wig was the slime. Maybe it was a slime wig. I don't fucking know anymore, man. I don't fucking, is he capping? Is any stats capping? I have no clue, but hey, give the videos a like. Subscribe to this channel if you enjoy this content. I love these infographics.